In the year 1066, the Viking Age ended. So all the Vikings hung their axes and shields on the wall and retired. This, however, wasn't the case with Finland and Finnic peoples. Raiding, typical of the Viking Age, remained a popular hobby well into the period of the European High Middle Ages. Across the bay, the Swedish tribes had started adopting a new faith, Christianity, and abandoning their old beliefs. Slowly but surely, Sweden would also consolidate herself into one country with a ruling monarch. Flipping their Thor's hammers upside down and adding a Jesus didn't seem to stop their thirst for raiding, however. It merely added an element of religious conversion to the popular and fun activity. During the Viking Age, Scandinavian Viking settlements were scarce inside Finland. From the 1100s onwards, however, the Swedes started to increasingly colonize the Finnish coast. Their rule became stronger over centuries, and much of today's Finland was consolidated into the Kingdom of Sweden. In medieval and later texts, the colonization is dubbed as Crusades against the pagan Finns. This is, however, largely propaganda and mythical history created to justify the rule of kings and the church in the Middle Ages. According to the traditional lore, the Swedes launched three crusades into Finland from around 1150 to 1293. The first crusade, led by King Eric the Holy, who was accompanied by Bishop Henry, was a well-known tale since the Middle Ages and similar to other European martyr legends, typical Christian propaganda. According to this legend, the king launched a crusade against the Finnish pagans and the bishop remained in Finland, establishing the local branch of the Catholic Church. He was then brutally murdered by the Finnish pagan Lalli on the ice of Lake Kölionjärvi, which earned him the title of Finland's patron saint. Apparently the bar for Catholic bishops was low, as getting murdered as an invader was considered an achievement. Same thing with the biblical figure Noah, who, according to the Finnish translation, was considered a decent man for hanging his back on a rack when he went into the sauna. There is, of course, no proof that either of the legendary characters ever existed. Bishop Henry and Lalli, that is. Well, there's no proof of the biblical Noah either. Nevertheless, they have remained popular for centuries. Interestingly, the murderer Lalli, whose name is ironically of Christian origin, transformed through centuries from an evil pagan barbarian into a patriotic hero who resisted foreign conquest and gods. Of the legendary crusades, the third one can be said to have taken place for certain. Archaeological evidence as well as place names suggest that not only Swedes but also Danes and potentially Norse and German invaders did their share of this violent tourism as well. So the Crusades to Finland can be seen as a part of the larger campaign of the conquest and conversion of the heathens of Northern Europe. A special pat on the shoulder and seal of approval goes to the Lithuanians for remaining the last pagans in Europe officially converting not until 1387. We don't know many details of how exactly the church and the new faith gained foothold. Black metal songs tend to portray this brutal, violent oppression and slaughter. And the church did certainly destroy old pagan shrines and build churches on top of them. Pope Alexander III's letter from 1171 or 72 to the Archbishop of Uppsala heavily complains about the pagan Finns mocking the Christian faith and trolling the church. They would pretend to be good Christians when threatened with the sword, but immediately afterwards they would harass the priests and make fun of their religion. On the other hand, archaeologist Ilari Aalto argues that the church likely cared little about the beliefs of individual Finns as long as that area could be counted as Catholic in the books. 
Christian beliefs were gradually adopted and added to Finnic paganism. It is likely that Jesus, Jehovah, the saints and other confusing Christian gods took their seats in the pantheon with Ukko, Tapio and others before partially replacing the pagan deities. Jehovah and Ukko probably influenced each other and got eventually mixed up. The world view of a slowly Christianizing Finn was quite different than that of the Christians in Southern Europe or the Crusader states. The masses were held in the local language, not Latin like the common myth says, and the clergy used familiar pagan terminology to explain foreign concepts. The underworldly punishment, for example, was dubbed Tuonela after the Finnish realm of the dead and hell in Germanic areas. Countless traces, or I don't know, maybe someone's counted them for a university thesis, of old pagan words in the Bible can be found in its older translations. For example, giants have been dubbed Kalevanpojat after the mythical primordial Finnish giants. It should of course be noted that there was no Finnish nation or identity at this point. People likely identified as members of their family or village. For the sake of convenience though, I gather the Finnic tribes living in present-day Finland under the umbrella of Finns in these videos, and you just have to deal with it. The Swedish grip of the country got stronger as the time passed. The Swedish-speaking settlers were given privileges over the Finnish population as they also largely formed the ruling class. The Erik Chronicle, which is the oldest surviving Swedish chronicle by the way, describes the Swedish crusades to Tavastia and Karelia. It is assumed that the Hamek castle was built following the crusade. The construction of castles helped to reinforce the Swedish rule both against the Finnish tribes as well as the Novgorodians from modern-day Russia. The Novgorodian chronicles also describe multiple deadly conflicts with Finnic tribes from the 11th or 12th century to the early 1300s. The Erik Chronicle also describes the Karelians looting the Swedish town of Sigtuna in 1187. It is also said that they repeated this fun activity in Sweden in 1257. These would be used as grounds to launch the third Swedish crusade into Finland against the Karelians in 1293. This bloody trip was followed by the construction of the strategic Viborg castle, allegedly by the orders of Marshal Torkel Knutsson, Lord High Constable of Sweden. The raids among the Finns, Swedes and Novgorodians would go on regardless until 1323. That's when Sweden and Novgorod got so bored of the bloody business that they drew a line on the map defining the borders of both realms for the first time. This is known as the Treaty of Nötebori, and it ends the Crusade era and marks the beginning of the Middle Ages in Finland. Which we will explore in the next video, as you might have guessed. Do consider subscribing if you haven't already, in order not to miss it. And if you want to support the making of this with your wallet, you can consider becoming a member of the channel. And as always, if Finnish mythology and history are close to your heart, see a cardiologist and then check out my other videos.